This is my 1986 SVO. The carpet is from 1986, so it's roughly almost 40 years old. The sun had faded it in spots, and a previous owner spilled some bleach on it. He also spilled a soda in there at some point. My options at that point were to take it to a professional, let them do it. That's going to be a few hundred dollars. I could just buy new carpet and put that down. That's also not going to be cheap, nor is it relatively easy. This is RIT. People use this for t-shirts to tie-dye. Picked this up on Amazon, around $14. I then went out to YouTube to, someone must have done this before, let me find out what's going on. There's a ton of different videos out there showing people dyeing carpet with RIT. However, none of them really walk through the steps or what they did. I'm going to try to attempt to do that for you in this video. The first thing I wanted to do was remove the seats and console. I didn't want to bore you with the details as every car is different. So using a little bit of editing, that's accomplished. Here is my carpet. It's dirty, sun faded, and someone dumped a soda on the passenger side back when supersized drinks were still a thing. You don't want to dye a dirty carpet, so it needs to be as clean as it can be to start. I vacuum the car's carpet vigorously. Next, I own a carpet shampooer. If you don't own one of these things, you can rent one at a lot of places. I use Tough Stuff Foam Carpet Cleaner and a brush to get out the tough stains. It's an unpaid endorsement. The carpet is shampooed with only hot tap water multiple times. This was a large soda, and it takes the better part of an hour until I'm sure I have it all out of my carpet. I set up some house fans to move air and allow the carpet to dry thoroughly. The prep work for the dye was the hardest part of this job. Once the carpet's dry, it's time to use the RIT dye. There are instructions for the use of this product with t-shirts. However, there's nothing out there for automotive carpet. The next thing I did was I purchased a spray bottle. It's just a generic spray bottle. You can pick these up anywhere. And it has the increment markings on it. I went with one bottle of this, RIT. I went with hot tap water. My tap water goes up to 125 degrees. That seemed to be adequate. So I went with one bottle of this and I filled this up to 20 ounces. That's it. I missed it directly on the carpet and smoothed it out with a brush in multiple directions. That moves the dye around the carpet. That works out really well. I let the dye dry overnight. The following morning I vacuumed the carpet again and I'm good to go. If I had to do this again, I'd go with the darker shade of gray than what I purchased. However, the white spots are now the light shade of gray that I bought. If I didn't know they were there, it's not something I would really notice. This is a viable, easy, and cheap way to dye automotive carpets. Now, I didn't do a color change. I wanted a uniform color across the carpet. I think it would be easier to go from light to darker shades. I don't think it'd be all that difficult. However, going the other way could present a problem. You try to go from black to white, I don't think that's going to happen. You'd probably have to bleach the carpet first. That said, if you were to restore a sun-faded carpet, this is a really great way to go. It's inexpensive and anybody really can do this. I know I would do it again in an instant. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. That way other people see it. Also, if you're a fan of Ford Motor Company and their products, consider subscribing. If you're not, don't worry about it. There's a lot of Ford content on the channel. Hopefully I was able to help somebody out out there. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.